From ancient lands to modern genetics, Merino sheep have been highly prized for centuries. They're one of the most important and popular sheep breeds in the world. Out of the over 1,000 distinct breeds of sheep, the Merino produces the finest wool on the planet. They are world-renowned because their wool has some unique qualities that make it ideal for next-to-skin clothing. Merino wool is the most sought-after wool available in the market. It's expensive, but still very much in demand. So what makes Merino wool so special? Well, if you're interested in the answer to that question, then grab your knitting or other crafting, settle in, and keep on watching to find out about the fascinating history and scientific research into the natural superfiber that makes Merino the king of wool. Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about merino sheep and their wool. Merino wool has been worn by soldiers, astronauts, athletes, and mountain climbers all over the world because of its distinctive properties. Now I did a video last year about the history of sheep, which I'll link down below in case you missed it and are interested in watching that. But for now, just a little refresher. Sheep domestication occurred over 12,000 years ago in Southwest Asia. Sheep were originally raised for meat production and reached Europe around 8,000 years ago. These original sheep breeds were not adapted to wool production. However, during Roman times, writers began describing different sheep breeds according to their fleece characteristics. They also mention sheep farms with as many as 10,000 sheep. The most prized sheep of all were known as Tarantine sheep, and their wool was especially fine. The sheep were protected by special jackets, and they were carefully housed and often combed and bathed with oil and wine, so they were very delicate. One early Roman writer relates that his uncle imported some rams from Africa. He crossed those rams with the local Tarantine sh sheep ewes, and they produced offspring with fine, soft wool. Other agriculturists continued the breeding program to improve the wool. These fine wool sheep were introduced to southern Spain about 3,000 years ago, and the breeding program continued. When the Roman Empire collapsed, the Italian sheep became extinct, but the improved stock in Spain survived. These sheep were crossed with African sheep imported by Arabs in the 12th century and are the main ancestor of the Merino breed. The name Merino comes from the Moroccan tribe, the Beni Marinas, who moved to Spain in large numbers, taking their sheep with them. It was during the Moorish rule in Spain that sheep farming reached its pinnacle. Now, the term Merino appears only a few times prior to the 17th century in the Spanish archives, and it didn't come into general use until the 19th century. Until then, they were just called Spanish sheep. For centuries, Spain held a total monopoly on all Merino wool. These sheep were so valuable that the wool trade was closely guarded, and laws were passed making the export of Merino sheep an offense punishable by death. The Merino flocks were the property of the king, churches, and wealthy nobility who formed a powerful federation called the Council of Mesta. The Mesta basically made their own laws, like forbidding the export of Merino sheep outside of Spain, and did whatever they wanted with their prized sheep. For example, there was no compensation to unfortunate villagers whose crops might be eaten by the huge flocks of sheep that were shepherded between Spain's northern highlands in the summer and southern plains in the winter. In the 18th century, small numbers of Merino sheep began to be legally exported from Spain, typically as gifts from the king to fellow monarchs. The first small flock of Merino sheep was sent to Sweden in 1723. In 1765, King Ferdinand gifted a large flock of Merino sheep to his cousin, Prince Xavier of Saxony. 
Another small flock was sent to Hungary in 1775, and in 1786, another flock was sent to the King of Prussia. A much larger flock was sent to King Louis XVI of France, who established a breeding program at his royal farm at Rambouillet, and this farm gave its name to a well-known merino breed that we now know as Rambouillet. In 1789, the King of Spain gave six merino sheep as a gift to the Dutch government. However, the sheep had trouble adjusting to the climate of the Netherlands, so were sent to the Dutch colony at the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. Within 10 years, the flock had more than quadrupled, and these animals were sold to British military officers bound for Australia. Demand for sheep in the new colony of Australia was mainly to provide meat. However, a small group of breeders were far-sighted enough to concentrate on fine wool production. John MacArthur bought some of the first merinos that had been brought to Australia, but he was the only farmer that kept them separated from other sheep and didn't allow them to interbreed. He was given a few hundred acres on which he built a farm called Elizabeth Farm, named after his wife. The MacArthurs worked to expand their pure merino flock, breeding more than 4,000 sheep by 1803. In 1807, the MacArthurs exported their first bale of Australian wool to England for sale, and six years later, they were making commercial shipments. John and Elizabeth MacArthur were the first to export quality merino wool from Australia. In 1820, they exported over 112,000 pounds of wool. They are widely recognized for their role in developing Australia's merino sheep and wool industry. By the late 19th century, wool was Australia's main export. And in 1966, John MacArthur was memorialized on a series of $2 Australian banknotes. Today, Australia has over 70 million merino sheep, which is actually less than 10% of the world's sheep population, but it dominates the global fine wool market producing more than 50% of the world's merino wool. Over 80% of Australian sheep are pure merino, with most of the remainder being at least part merino. The merino sheep breed is medium-sized, ewes weigh about 120 pounds, and rams are about 170 pounds. They have thick skin with lots of deep wrinkles in their heavy, dense coats. Their wool is soft, strong, and uniform in length, they usually have a smooth, clear face with bright and alert eyes. Their wool must be shorn every year because it continues to grow and will create health problems if not maintained. Each sheep produces about 15 to 24 pounds of wool per year. And they also have a longer productive lifespan than other sheep breeds. In fact, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the oldest sheep ever was a merino who lived to be 23 years old. Like other sheep, merino have a 300 degree field of vision, making it possible to see practically all around themselves without turning their heads. Some merinos have horns and some don't. They have a strong herding instinct and submissive disposition. They also adapt well to many different climates and habitats and are good foragers. So they're quite a versatile and valuable sheep. Okay, so that's a little bit about the history and physical attributes about Merino sheep. Now let's turn to the properties of Merino wool and what makes it so special. Now remember that wool has evolved over thousands of years to insulate and protect sheep. So that's its main job. And we humans have taken advantage of its usefulness to make wool products that can benefit humans as well. So let's start with the highly complex chemical structure of merino wool. It contains over 170 different proteins that are responsible for various properties of wool. And these proteins are composed of amino acids. Out of the 22 naturally occurring amino acids, merino contains 18. 
Some of the important chemical structures are responsible for making wool insoluble in water and stabilizing it under both wet and dry conditions. These chemical structures are also what gives wool its amazing ability to both repel and absorb water, and they control the dyeing behavior of the wool as a result of their interactions with dye molecules. Merino wool also has a complex physical structure. Individual fibers or hairs range in diameter from 17 to 24 microns, which is about one-fourth the diameter of a single human hair. The thinner the fiber, the softer it feels. So for comparison, angora fiber is 12 to 16 microns, cashmere is 14 to 18, and silk is 10 to 13. As far as other breeds of sheep, blue-faced luster is 24 to 28 microns, Cheviot is 28 to 33, Polworth is 21 to 26, and Southdown is 23 to 28 microns. So at 17 to 24 microns, Merino is definitely one of the softest sheep's wools. Other wools can feel itchy because of their larger fiber diameter. The human threshold for feeling that a fiber is itchy is about 25 microns. Now, merino wool has a smaller fiber diameter and therefore feels comfortable and soft. Cuticle cells, or scales, cover the outer layer of wool's individual fibers, as you can see in this view of a single merino fiber under an electron microscope. These scales overlap like tiles on a roof. The purpose of these scales is to anchor the wool fibers in the skin of the sheep. The edge of each scale points toward the tip of the fiber, which helps expel dirt and other contaminants from the sheep's skin and fleece. These scales are also responsible for wool's property of felting when agitated in water. Hot water especially opens up these scales so that when the fibers are moved around, the scales catch on one another and interlock preventing the fiber from returning to its original shape. This process can be controlled so that thick, dense fabrics can be formed. Felted wool is used to make things like blankets, coats, gloves, and hats, which keep people very warm. As I alluded to previously, wool uniquely manages moisture. The fiber has a hydrophobic or water repelling exterior of those overlapping scales with a waxy coating so it will repel water at the surface. Wool fibers are relatively difficult to wet compared to other textile materials. And this property is the result of this waxy hydrocarbon coating that is chemically bound to the surface of each scale. The water repellent surface makes wool garments naturally rainproof and also reduces staining because spills don't soak in easily. Now, even though the outside of the wool fiber is water repelling, tiny pores in the cuticle cells allow water vapor to pass through the surface into the interior of the fiber called the cortex. This makes wool comfortable to wear in both warm and cool conditions. The composition of merino wool results in excellent body temperature regulation, keeping you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. When wool absorbs moisture, it produces heat. So if you go from a warm room into a cold, damp night wearing a wool sweater, the wool picks up the water vapor from the air, keeping you warm. The reverse occurs when you go back into the warm room. The moisture in your sweater passes into the atmosphere, cooling you down. The cortex retains liquids like water and also sweat, so your perspiration will get wicked away from your skin before bacteria have a chance to break it down, thus preventing that bad smell. The molecules in the cortex have fairly weak bonds, so with prolonged wear and abrasion, they do tend to break down, and this means your merino garments can pill which is what happens when you get those little unsightly fuzz balls or knots of fiber on the surface of your sweaters and other wool items. The weak bonds also make wool susceptible to chemical attack, especially by strong alkaline solutions like laundry detergent or bleach. This is why washing wool with a pH neutral cleanser is recommended. There are two main types of cell in the cortex, orthocortical 
and paracortical, and each has a slightly different chemical composition. In merino wool, these cells are arranged in two distinct regions. These cells create the crimp or the waviness in the individual wool fibers. The two types of cells expand differently when they absorb moisture, causing the fiber to bend. When the cells are arranged in two halves, like in merino wool, there is more crimp. In coarser fibers, these cells are arranged more randomly, creating less crimp. In addition to the crimp, there is a large volume of air between the fibers, which provides great insulating properties. And it's a fantastic insulator, even when wet. As the humidity in the air rises and falls, the wool fiber absorbs and releases water vapor. With clothing, wool reacts to the changes in body temperature, maintaining the wearer's comfort in both cold and warm weather. I mean, think about the earliest users of wool. Evidence points to these people being desert dwellers in North Africa and the Middle East. People used wool garments for hundreds or even thousands of years in the extreme heat of the world's greatest deserts, where temperatures are exceptionally hot and during the day and cold at night. And this is what wool is perfect for, and merino wool is ideal because it feels soft against the skin. Historically, there's been a general misconception that all wool is itchy and irritating to the skin, but new research has shown that there are real health benefits of ultra-fine and super-fine merino wool worn next to the skin. In 2018, researchers at the Queensland Institute of Dermatology in Australia specifically focused on merino wool in skin health and its use in the treatment of chronic skin disorders. The aim of the study was to explore the benefits of wearing superfine merino base layer garments in children, adolescents, and young adults with eczema. Now, eczema is a skin condition that affects about 30% of children and about 10% of adults. It is a chronic inflammatory skin disease that results in itchy, red, swollen, and cracked skin. Scratching the itchy skin makes the eczema more susceptible to bacterial and fungal infections. There is no known cure, and the only treatment is moisturizing the skin to reduce the intensity and frequency of flare-ups. So in this study, participants were measured on several eczema severity assessments, both before and after a five-week intervention. During the intervention period, all participants were instructed to wear different garments made of superfine merino wool that are designed to be worn next to the skin, including t-shirts, underwear, leggings, and socks. The clothing items were worn for at least six hours per day. The results of the study indicated a decrease in symptoms like redness, itchiness, inflammation, bleeding, flakiness, and surface area involved. Also, the patients reported that their skin felt more comfortable in the merino garments. So overall, the study found that superfine merino wool was a valuable therapy in the management of eczema. Another study at the University of Melbourne in Australia used a similar research design to test whether superfine merino would work better than cotton to improve eczema symptoms. The participants in this study were young children aged four weeks to three years old. The children were measured on various indexes of dermatitis severity every week for 12 weeks. Half of that time, the participants wore cotton clothing, and the other half, they wore superfine merino wool clothing, and the order was randomized so that some wore the cotton first and some wore the wool first. And again, they wore the assigned clothing for at least six hours per day. The results of the study also showed that superfine merino wool clothing reduced the severity of eczema in the children compared to cotton clothing. A different study at the University of Louisville in Kentucky basically replicated this study using young adults in their mid-20s as participants. They found the same thing, that superfine merino wool garments improved itchy and painful skin in the patients. And the participants reported that the wool clothing was comfortable to wear. 
Now, the typical recommendation for clothing used by people with eczema has been to wear cotton or silk. These fibers are seen as softer and more comfortable compared to other types of fibers. However, the studies I just talked about offer evidence that wearing fine diameter merino wool garments actually decreased eczema symptoms. Interestingly, a recent study of the use of silk clothing in individuals with eczema showed no benefit from wearing silk. So, superfine merino wool is in fact more therapeutic for patients with eczema than cotton or silk. In an interesting study, wool even improved skin health in animals. In this study, dogs had part of their skin shaved and then covered with polyester or wool. The hair under the polyester grew back significantly slower than the hair covered in wool. The researchers suggested that this effect is due to the electro electrostatic environment created next to the skin. Specifically, synthetic fibers like polyester hold a strong positive charge, and positive ions are known to do things like suppress the immune system and disturb the normal functioning of the brain. Natural fibers like wool absorb more humidity from the surrounding air than synthetic fibers, so are less likely to hold static electricity. So that might be another factor involved in using wool to improve skin health. Okay, another interesting medical use of wool in skin health has been in healing wounds. Researchers have started investigating keratin-based wound care devices, which are created with either human hair or sheep's wool. I read several studies that compared wool-derived keratin to other treatments, and the wool-derived keratin improved healing for chronic wounds, less blister frequency, and generally improved healing rates. Specifically, the wool keratin prompted faster cell migration and greater stimulation of collagen. So wool may contribute to the reconstitution of skin layers and overall skin integrity. So we can add that to the other research on the benefits of wool on skin health. Now, besides treating chronic skin conditions like eczema and hard to heal wounds, Merino wool has also been shown to have benefits due to its temperature regulation and moisture management properties. These characteristics have several implications for health. And nowhere does the link between wool and health translate so compellingly as when applied to babies. Keeping babies warm helps them stay healthy and comfortable. And when babies are healthy and comfortable, they are happy. Babies use large amounts of energy to stay warm in a cold environment, and wool helps them maintain the energy reserves they need. In fact, researchers have found that weight gain in underweight newborns was 61% higher when the baby slept on a wool underlay rather than cotton. And wool not only keeps babies warm, but it helps regulate body temperature, reducing the risk of overheating and feeling uncomfortably hot. Wool allows the skin to breathe naturally and helps prevent sweating, so the body is able to find its natural equilibrium. Merino wool underlays, blankets, sleeping bags, sleeping gowns, and sleep suits also help with sleep. There are quite a few studies that have shown that sleep is the primary activity of the brain during early development. The first three years of life are a particularly sensitive time for sleep in brain development. One of the most common reasons for babies waking up at night is being too hot or too cold. And researchers have found that babies who sleep with merino wool had deeper, more restful sleep. They settled more quickly, cried less, slept longer, and gained weight faster than babies who didn't sleep with wool. This has also been found with older children. Those who slept on wool bedding were less likely to have problems sleeping compared to those who slept on synthetic bedding. And it's not only babies who need a good night's sleep. New research has shown the benefits of superfine merino and the quality of sleep in adults as well. 
A three-year study conducted at the University of Sydney in Australia showed a direct correlation between merino wool bedding and sleep quality in adults. The wool underlay helped people achieve optimal thermal regulation throughout the night, and we know that a constant core temperature improves sleep. So maybe it's not surprising that the merino wool was found to have a positive impact on things like sleep quality and time spent asleep. Pain in general also improves from having wool next to the skin. In one clinical intervention, researchers examined the effect of wool, undergarments, and bedding on people with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a condition that causes pain all over the body, sleep problems, fatigue, and often emotional and mental distress. Although the cause is unknown, it is thought that people with fibromyalgia might be more sensitive to pain than people without it. So fibromyalgia affects about 4 million people in the U.S., about 2% of the adult population. So in this one study, participants were divided into two groups, a treatment group and a control group that were provided with different kinds of undergarments and bedding for use over six weeks. The treatment group wore merino wool underwear that covered the body from the shoulders to the thighs and also used a wool bed liner, wool quilt, and wool pillow. The control group participants received cotton undergarments and bedding made of synthetic material. Participants' pain was measured at the beginning of the study and then again after using the materials provided. A researcher visited each participant's home on a weekly basis to make sure they were following the study protocol by wearing their garments and using the bedding consistently. Each participant also kept a daily diary to record pain and medication use. At the end of the study, the treatment group who had used the wool products reported less overall pain, fewer pain points, fewer days of work missed, better sleep quality, and less anxiety and depression. So generally, the patients who used wool were doing better both physically and psychologically than those in the control group. The researchers speculate that one reason for the lower pain was that the wool kept their bodies warm, which led to an increase in blood flow, which in turn reduced the pain. Now, previous studies have found that people with fibromyalgia tend to be sensitive to cold, the skin temperature on pain points is lower, and that blood flow is impaired. So in this study, the patients using wool clothing and bedding were able to maintain a constant and balanced body temperature. Thus, they probably experienced more restorative sleep and woke up feeling more refreshed and rested from the very first day of the study. They also used less pain medication and were able to carry heavier loads and performed physical activities more easily than their counterparts in the control group. So this study highlights a simple yet effective lifestyle intervention using wool products that can make a huge difference in people's lives, both medically and psychologically. Now that last study talked about the importance of wool in improving blood flow. And another study looked at using merino wool compression stockings to increase circulation in the legs. This study was conducted at the Medical Research Institute of New Zealand. The research team noted that most compression hosiery available is constructed from synthetic fibers. However, merino wool is a natural protein fiber with good moisture managing properties that helps provide a healthy skin environment underneath the stocking. For this reason, they used a below-the-knee graduated compression stocking made out of merino wool to test its effectiveness in preventing blood clots in the lower leg. Now, blood clots are fairly common in people who are seated for long periods of time, like in long-distance travel or sitting for a long time at work. So participants in this study were adults between the ages of 18 and 65. They each wore a wool compression stocking on either the right or left leg by random assignment. The experiment protocol was that they were supposed to refrain from taking part in any strenuous physical exercise like running or cycling for 24 hours. 
After the 24-hour period, the participants went to an ultrasound lab to have the blood flow in their lower legs measured. The results showed that the wool stocking increased blood circulation in the lower leg during prolonged immobility. It also decreased leg swelling at both the ankle and the calf. Now the effect of the wool stocking is similar to that of other compression stockings. However, the wool stockings are more likely to maintain a healthy environment for the skin. Therefore, it is recommended that they be used in situations where the person is stationary for long periods like that long distance travel or, or work or after surgery even. There's also some interesting evidence that wool can have effects on reproduction. One prolific researcher named Ahmed Shafiq published more than 500 scientific papers, mostly on the subjects of urology and reproduction. Now, in one of his studies, Shafiq dressed 75 male lab rats in tiny little underpants, some made out of wool and some made out of polyester. And the rats wore these little pants for six to 12 months and Shafiq tracked their sexual activity. He found that the rats who wore polyester were less likely to complete an attempted sexual encounter than they were before they started wearing the pants. The wool-wearing rats showed no difference in their sexual success rates. However, six months after removing the pants, the sexual vigor returned to those that had worn the polyester pants. A later study by that same author found similar results with male dogs. The dogs who wore the polyester pants showed degeneration of the testes and significant decreases in sperm production. This effect was again not seen in dogs wearing wool pants. After the polyester pants were removed, the dog's semen character improved. Shafiq's experiments showed that female dogs wearing the same type of pants were less likely to conceive if they were wearing polyester as opposed to wool. Now, as an aside, the negative effects of synthetic underwear have also been found in human men. Those who wore 100% polyester or even polyester blend underwear reported drastically lowered sexual desire and activity. In fact, because of these results, Shafiq tested a polyester sling as a male con contraceptive. Um, the men in this study were, wore the sling for a year, and after about 140 days, they stopped producing viable sperm, and none of their partners became pregnant during the study. Once they took off the slings, things eventually returned to normal, and the couples who wanted to conceive did actually get pregnant. So the lesson here is probably to stay away from synthetic underwear and use undies made out of natural fibers if you're trying to get pregnant. Now, you may be thinking, this is all great, but what about people who are allergic to wool? Well, I've said it before that it's highly unlikely that someone is actually allergic to wool. Wool is made of the exact same proteins as human hair. So it doesn't make sense that someone would be allergic to wool, but not their own hair. And in fact, a recent review of studies conducted over the past 100 years confirms this. The research team spanned nine universities in Australia and the UK, and they looked at dozens of studies in an effort to compare intense skin irritation to real allergic reaction. Now, skin irritation results in contact dermatitis, which is an inflammation caused by chemical or physical skin injury. It's accompanied by an unpleasant sensation that provokes the desire to scratch the skin. On the other hand, an allergic reaction triggers the release of specific antibodies directed at an agent, the thing you're allergic to. Itch is one common symptom of both allergies and skin irritation, but many people equate itch with allergy alone. When it comes to wool, its physical properties can cause prickle and itch through stimulation of nerve cells that respond to pain. Now, numerous studies have shown that fine wool with fiber diameters under 19, 19 microns are not perceived as prickly, while those with coarser fibers greater than 32 microns cause the prickle sensation. So this would mean that 
the more coarse wools cause itching, but it is simply a topical skin irritation and not an allergic reaction. According to this review that, I'm, that I was reading, um, very few studies have looked at the results of allergy testing of wool, but one did conduct skin tests with various types of wool in people who self-identified as having wool intolerance. None of these people showed reactions in a true allergy test. Another study included sheep's wool in a panel of allergens, and none of the participants in that study reacted to the wool either. In the other handful of studies investigating wool as the cause of allergic dermatitis, only one participant had a positive patch test indicating a real allergic reaction. So in over 100 years of research, only one participant was found to have an actual allergy to wool. It's also been speculated that the cause of wool allergy is actually lanolin, the waxy coating secreted by the sheep's sebaceous glands. It is similar to the oil our own skin produces to lubricate our skin and hair. And lanolin is thought to be a skin sensitizer, meaning that it could cause allergic reactions when coming into contact with the skin. And there is some evidence of lanolin allergy. Um, the first positive lanolin patch test dates back to the 1930s. However, today's wool scouring systems remove most of the lanolin from wool down to levels less than 0.5%. Subsequent dyeing and finishing processes reduce re residual lanolin levels even more. Now, in a review of over 24,000 patients patch tested with lanolin over a period of 14 years, only 1.4% of people had allergic reactions to lanolin. So the likelihood of lanolin allergy is also very low. So in sum, the evidence fails to support the notion that wool is an allergen. A more likely explanation for skin irritation is, is high fiber diameters, which or, or coarser wools, which activate pain receptors in the skin and cause feelings of discomfort and itch. However, these days, super fine merino wool garments with small fiber diameters are more readily available. And these fibers don't activate the pain receptors responsible for itchy feelings, and in fact, feel completely comfortable against the skin. And as I've covered throughout this video, superfine merino is actually beneficial for people with eczema, skin wounds, fibromyalgia, sleep difficulties, and blood circulation problems. Well, that brings us to the end of today's class. I hope you've enjoyed this peek into the history and some of the health benefits of merino wool. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them down below. I would love to hear from you, whether it's about your own experiences with medical applications of merino wool, or letting me know what you learned today, or just to say hi. Also, please feel free to comment if you have any questions about today's topic, or if you have an idea for what you'd like to see in future videos. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, stay smart, stay healthy, and have a sparkly week. Bye, everybody.